So the next house after the ghetto house was very much a middle class, like, I guess lower middle class, like, white American neighborhood. Like, this is where we started living differently. Because my parents, up until this point, neither of them had ever had, like, even decent money. My parents grew up broke, you know? my I mean, my dad, I want to say that his dad was decently well off like his dad not not well off but like he was a normal middle class you know american but like his parents split up when he was little and um you know life got really difficult for him for in his uh, in his high school years for sure like when he was living with his mom and they literally had no food in the house like he would like steal food just to eat and like basically had to fend for himself for a while and uh, that was why he joined the Navy was because he just like needed he, he literally joined the Navy so he would have like regular meals. Um, and my mom grew up dirt broke because she was, you know, single mother with six fucking kids, uh, you know, bouncing between boyfriends. And so like both of them, you know, even though they'd worked really hard and they had all these manager positions at different stores and stuff, you know, it's, it's all still pretty relatively low class living. You know, they were not making middle class income. Until my dad joined the car business. And my dad was a runaway success in the car business. He literally, literally got employee of the month every month. We used to have a wall lined with plaques of every employee of the month and then employee of the year, like the bigger ones, you know, that he got from his work. He was always outselling everybody. He was always working harder than everybody. He was always making more money. And the reason is that in the car business, you can get bonuses. If you sell a certain number of cars during certain periods, then you will probably access a bonus. And so it's very, very meritocratic. And since my dad wanted those bonuses, he would make sure he got the fucking bonus. Like, if there was a bonus offered, he was going to be the one who got it. So, um, you know, he was making really fast money in the car business. But again, my parents are from a broke ass background. They do not know how to manage money. So, you know, this, this, this guy is spending his money as fast as he's making it, but we don't know that me and my brother, we don't know that. So we move into another house and, um, I remember it was a two story house, but relatively small. Um, I'm sure it felt huge to me at the time. Cause I was fucking six years old, started the first grade. Um, and this is once again a case where I didn't, I had like two kind of friends. I had one friend who lived in the cul-de-sac that was near my house. He was a grade older than me, so I didn't see him that much, but he had video games. He had a Super Nintendo and, um, he was like way into, uh, Super Mario World 1 and, um, Mega Man X and I remember he tried to get me to play them with him, and I just, like, didn't understand it at all. Like, it was way too hard. Trying to jump in with those games if you don't own them. Like, the reason kids in the 90s were able to play such difficult games is because you would get one game, and you would play it over and over again until you figured out what the fuck to do, you know? Like, if you sit there for an afternoon, you'll eventually figure out how to play Mega Man X, but I was, like, handed a controller and just told to, like, go. And I'm like, I don't even know what the fuck the buttons do. I don't even have the hand-eye coordination to, like, do this, you know. So I did not f see the appeal of video games at the time. Um, but, yeah, that kid was a was a was was kind of a friend. Um, we weren't super-duper close. I probably hung out with them, like, once a week or so. I remember one time getting into an argument with his dad because his dad... Uh, like, I had learned that the first day of the week is Sunday, which is true. But his dad was insisting that it was Monday, which is an understandable and very adult way of looking at it, because Monday is the first work day. But uh, we were, like, literally fucking arguing over it. And I, was, and I also remember that his dad had a gun somewhere lying around. Like, I remember seeing or hearing about that his dad had a gun. Um... Man, I really can't even remember this kid's name. I want to say it was something like Devin, but I'm not sure. He was, I think he was like a, I remember him being like darker skinned, but not a black kid. I don't remember what race he was. I barely remember this kid, but uh, he lived in the cul-de-sac 
uh, next to my house. We were, like, on the edge of the cul-de-sac. And I remember that he had an older brother who was, like, like really like mean to him because he was in second grade so he's like seven and his older brother was like 14 or so and his older brother would just like fucking clown on him constantly um like a total asshole um but yeah so i hung out with that kid a bit and then there was another kid in another cul-de-sac that was across from my house that i hung out with a few times but i just remember feeling like he was a like a huge pussy that's all i remember about him but i don't know i don't know i don't remember much um, other than that, he was kind of like a fraidy cat. He didn't want to hang out that much. Um, but I also, so I remember of this house that this is where Shade was born. So my parents, I was the only planned pregnancy in my family. I was, uh, intentional. My parents, even though I was born like fucking barely a year after they got married, um, cause they got married in 1990. And I was born in 91. Like, they got married in, like, I want to say July. I think their anniversary is in July of 1990. And I was born in August of 1991. So, yeah, they quickly got to work on having a kid. They were only dating for six weeks when they got married, too. So that means within, like, a few fucking months of knowing each other, they were like, let's have a kid. My parents are absolutely insane. Like, I, I feel like me and May are moving fast compared to most people, and we've already been together for, like, six months at the time of this recording, you know, and we're just now, like, talking about, you know, getting engaged, probably gonna get married by the end of the first year we're together, and, you know, have a kid in the future. My parents got married after six weeks and had a kid after, like, a few months. I don't know what the hell they were thinking, but it worked out, somehow, some fucking how. In the long run, it's worked out. Um, so, so yeah, uh, my I was planned. Victor was not, and Shade was definitely not. Shade was like extra unplanned. Shade was like broken condom unplanned, like out of nowhere. Uh, my mom was pregnant again, and she decided, you know, it was it was a tough decision, but she was like, oh, well, I'm I'm gonna keep him, obviously, you know, and. Um, so yeah, we were, we were going to have a th fucking third, third one, you know? And at this point, me and Victor were old enough to understand that. Like Victor had been with me for as long as I could remember. Like I, you know, was a fucking baby when he was born. So I have no recollection of a time before him. I can remember shade, you know, I can remember the pregnancy. I can remember us discussing what he should be named for a very long time. It took us up until like the last month or so to finally decide that he was going to be named shade. Um, I wanted him to be named Ian because I was a really big fan of Jurassic Park at the time. That was my next obsession after Beast Wars was I got way into Jurassic Park um, because I liked dinosaurs a lot. And it was more like I was into dinosaurs, but like I would watch the, the Jurassic Park and the Lost World, which I saw Lost World in theaters and I fucking loved it because it had way more dinosaurs. And uh, I would watch those two movies all the fucking time. And... Um, I had this gigantic book of dinosaur facts, like this fucking huge goddamn encyclopedia of dinosaur facts that I would like memorize random information from. Like I, I mostly just knew the heights of different dinosaurs. Like I would just memorize like how tall a T-Rex is, like 25 feet, how tall a, t a, a Raptor is, like six feet or so, you know, like, and I would sit there with a measuring tape and I would like push out the tape until it reached the size of that dinosaur. And I remember like the main reason I can remember what the living room of that house looked like at all is that I would do that and like measuring tape out dinosaur <laughs> lengths. I also remember being really into Mortal Kombat. Um, and it wasn't even because of the games. I was way into the movie. Like we had seen the Mortal Kombat movie. Like I know we saw the second one in theaters. I think we had seen the first one on like on DVD or no VHS rather. This is the fucking early 90s. Um, yeah, we'd seen the first Mortal Kombat movie on VHS, and I loved it. And we saw the second one, and I loved that. And so I was always talking about how cool Mortal Kombat was, even though I'd never played any of the games. Didn't even... I don't think I knew about them yet. Um, maybe I'd, like, heard a rumor or something. But, yeah. Uh, so I was way into fucking dinosaurs and shit. And I remember that 
Uh, oh yeah, the reason I was saying that is that we wanted to name. I wanted Shade to be named Ian after Ian Malcolm, the character um, that is played by uh, what the fuck's his name, the fucking weird dude in uh, in Jurassic Park. Because there's Ian uh, Malcolm and Grant. What was the first name of Grant? Because I also liked that name. Um, anyway, I wanted Shade to be named after a Jurassic Park character, and my mom thought those were okay names. Isaac was one she almost went for, which is his middle name. Um, but yeah, she ended up naming him Shade after Shade the Changing Man, the comic book. Um, we all thought it was a pretty cool name. So, uh, I remember that we were into Magic the Gathering too, because my dad had this good friend that he made early into this time in the car business, uh, named Wee Chin. And Wee Chin was like, uh, he's a Chinese dude who was like a little bit nerdy, but like mostly just incredibly fucking smart and like business savvy. Like he knew all kinds of business shit. He knew stocks and stuff like that. And, um, he, one time we were at his house and him and some friends were playing Magic the Gathering and me and my mom got into it and we ended up buying decks and me and my mom would play Magic like all the time until she got too pregnant with Shade, or maybe it was when Shade was born. Like, after Shade was born, my mom stopped playing Magic with me because she was too busy taking care of the baby, and I remember being really sad about that because Victor was too young to understand it, and so, um, yeah, I was I was really upset because I and I never got back into Magic in a big way again after that, but I was pretty into it as a little kid. I, I want to think that if I had ever, like, if, if I'd kept playing it with my mom, and eventually met other people who played Magic, I would have become, like, a big-time Magic the Gathering player throughout my life. Maybe it's for the best that I <laughs> that didn't happen. But, um... Yeah, so... I also remember that in this period, that kid, the kid who, whose name is Devin in my mind, even though I'm not sure that was his name at all, um, he got me into Godzilla. Because he was a huge fan of Godzilla... And he had a bunch of the VHS tapes of uh, the old Godzilla movies, and he would bring them over and show them to me, and I thought they were fucking awesome, because he's basically a giant dinosaur, um, but, like, even cooler than a dinosaur. And uh, I remember it was kind of a slow burn, but, like, I think I started also collecting Godzilla tapes, and then... I remember being really into Godzilla vs. Megalon, because that's the one that has uh, Jet Jaguar in it, and uh, Godzilla vs. Gigan was pretty cool. Um, like, his favorite was Mecha Godzilla, and that was definitely, like, the most popular one. Or not Mecha Godzilla, but uh, King Ghidra, or maybe even Mecha Ghidra. Uh, either way, I, I just remember that, like, my favorite was, like, Megalon, um, which is, like, one of the stupider, more corny Godzilla movies, but I think that's why I liked it as a kid. Um, and I remember the one, the one with baby Godzilla with Gadzuki in it, and um, it was like on an island, like the island of monsters, where like Godzilla's just like fighting other monsters for the whole movie. Meanwhile, there's a B plot about some Japanese kid doing who the fuck knows what. Yeah, um, watched a lot of fucking Godzilla, and I really got into it around the time we were leaving that house, like when we moved to the next house. By then, I, um, because that was when the Godzilla. Uh, American film came out, and I fucking loved that movie. It was way into that, but that comes a little later. So yeah, I was I was into Godzilla, and the other big thing that happened in that house was video games got introduced to me because my older cousin Jared, who was the reason that my parents had never bought us video games, because he was a violent sociopath who would break consoles constantly and flip shit, and was generally crazy. Um, my parents did not want us having video games because they were afraid it would make us like him. Uh, because this is the 90s, and the idea that video games make you violent was in the news. Um, but eventually, he came over to our house one time for Christmas, or something like that, and he was playing, maybe it was Thanksgiving, and then we got it for Christmas. Yeah, he came over for Thanksgiving, and he brought his N64, and he was playing Diddy Kong Racing, and I thought it was the coolest fucking game ever. Like, I thought it was super awesome, and I wanted to play it. And then he gave us an N64 that Christmas, as I understand it. I think he, like, gave us his old N64 and two old controllers, one of which had a broken L button and one a broken R button, both from him having damaged them. And, um, so he gave us this N64, and, uh, but we didn't have any games for it. And I wanted to buy Diddy Kong Racing, but I couldn't fucking find it. And I didn't have enough money to buy, like, any new games, so I ended up buying Tetrisphere, because it was only 20 bucks, 
and um, I didn't understand it at all and wasn't into it. And I finally got Diddy Kong Racing like a while later. But yeah, that was our introduction to video games. So all this was in this house. Now, you may be wondering, like, I'm not really talking much about the house itself and the environment because, again, as a kid, moving so often, it was really hard to, like, set any roots down anywhere, you know? Like... I, like, by way of moving out of Green Run, we'd completely lost contact with the friends we had before, you know? I think my mom was actually still talking to that other mom, because they're still friends to this day, um, like, they still hang out every once in a while, uh, but, like, we never saw those kids again, you know? I think I've seen Spencer once since then, like, as a, like, as an adult, you know, because my mom hangs out with, uh, with his mom still, um, but yeah, it was just completely drastically um you know they, they different they were they were gone and uh these other kids that I was hanging out with now like you know I lived there for about a year so I kind of made friends with them but like the one kid again was a grade older than me and um you know I went into the first grade while we were living there he went into the second grade and I think after he went into the second grade I kind of lost contact with him like he he was hanging out with other people and so you know and Shade was arrived now, so it's like, uh, basically I spent a lot of time fucking bored and by myself. And I think this is why I started getting into nerd hobbies and the internet as a kid. Is that, like, I just didn't have, I didn't have enough, I didn't have any friends, you know. And my, my mom, who I had been fucking attached to at the hip for the first five years of my life, um, you know, now that Shade was being born, I didn't, I couldn't really have her time all to myself and I could hang out with Victor but again he was like still like a bit like I was I was really smart from a young age you know like I was doing stuff that was perhaps more advanced than most like playing fucking Magic the Gathering when I'm like five or six you know uh Victor being four was not and and normal in that regard was not at all going to get into Magic the Gathering you know so like I just remember being sort of lonely and bored, but like I had my Godzilla and I had my, you know, my, my dinosaurs and shit like that and my, my video games. So, um, yeah, that's all I really remember about that house. I don't remember anything dramatic about the neighborhood. I think the only reason we moved out is because we now had a third brother, you know, and the family was bigger, so we needed a bigger house. And my dad was still... Um, you know, he was insanely successful in the car business. So like he was making enough money that he could rapidly rise up, you know, he could rapidly get nicer and nicer places because he could afford to. Um, and he didn't, again, he's not like much into saving money or like, uh, you know, like thinking back on it, that house we were in was probably fine. Like, you could easily fit a family of five in that house. I don't know if there were other circumstances. Maybe they were too far away from work. Maybe there was some other reason we moved other than just Shade being born. But I can't help but think it was irresponsible for my dad to move into an even nicer house at that point. Because it was when he moved and started, in addition to that, renovating this house and doing all kinds of shit to it, like this is when my dad started spending way too much money and where I think he accrued a lot of his debt. And, um, you know, a lot of the issues in our lives started springing up in the next house. But, um, I also know that around this period was like the fattest my dad ever got. Like if I look at pictures of him from that house, I was just telling you about, it's really surreal. Cause my dad grew up a super skinny twig boy. Like when he was, when, when he was, a uh, before he joined the Navy, he was like scrawny, like bone. You could see his bones to his skin kind of thing. You know, when we joined the Navy, he became like a fit guy. And when he and my mom got married, he was like playing volleyball all the time and like running. And he was like a big sport dude. And that's what he is now. Like as of his late thirties onwards, he got really into fitness. When my dad was like, like in his, like when he's like 37, 38 was when he was like lifting the heaviest he was ever lifting, like 300 pound bench presses and shit. And like, you know, running and skating every day with his fucking shirt off. And he had like a deep tan and like, and he's still like that. He runs marathons, you know, he's fucking 50. He literally turned 50 the other day and he's still running fucking like half marathons and shit all the time. 
Um, but in his early 30s, like right when he turned 30, he was totally dad bod. Because that was when he first started losing his hair and he hadn't started shaving his head yet. Because he's been a shaved head guy ever ever since. But, um, you know, he was balding and he was fat. And, like, there's pictures of him looking, like, 10 years older than he currently does at age 30. Which is really funny. But, um, yeah, that's all I really remember about that house. So, from there, we'll move on to something else. In fact, I think I'm going to tell the rest of my house stories in a different podcast because I'm sick of going through it. And the next one's... Like, the next house after that is where it gets too big. Like, the next house after that we lived in for four years... And um, there's a lot to say about it. So I think I'm going to leave that one for later. And I'll probably be able to wring multiple stories out of that house. 